I've already ruined it. <laughs> We're not going to start again. We're just going to go into it. Uh... Hey, everybody. It's Friday today. Welcome to the Bombcast Revengeance. I am your host, Jan Ochoa. We are both powered by NZXT. Welcome to this beautiful Friday, March 29th, 2024. Everyone is looking great today. Make sure you're going to go drink some water if you haven't. And speaking about water, we got we, we got the wettest man in games media. Mike Minotti. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! I did it, everybody. I'm the wettest. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Water park uh, over there. And, and yeah, I'm a water world out, out to myself. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't have uh, water without perhaps putting a boat on said water. And most boats have a captain, just like this podcast has co-captain of the ship, as always. Joining me, Jeff Grubb. I'm devastated. It's the end of fiscal, and we've lost him, everybody. Jim oh. Ryan is gone. He's no longer PlayStation wow. Interactive CEO. I'm never going to recover. I'm dying. Never going to recover. Uh and 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 um i i ha no god i have nothing i have nothing it's in the fiscal chan get more energy going uh, to, to help us celebrate the end of fiscal <laughs> uh bailey myers everybody hello i feel like my internet's being bad and laggy so i'm like being <laughs> yeah, choppy terrible. over there so if you see me freeze i'm not doing that for real i need you to know it's my computer for some reason <laughs> I was like, man, I know I'm off my podcast game this week because I've just been tired, but damn, I'm just losing <laughs> everybody today. <laughs> it's uh, sad. It's so sad. I know. I, I don't know how to podcast. You go away to a convention for a weekend and you don't know how to do anything anymore. Yeah. I, I, I definitely felt that coming back where I'm like, I, oh, I got to do those shows. That's I, That shouldn't be allowed. I should be able to just sit in a room quiet and not talk to anyone for a whole week. That is how I felt after PAX. Uh, I don't know how you guys you felt. You should be allowed to do that. I think yes. you should do that more, actually. Thank you. And when you say it, it sounds derogatory. But yes, thank you. What? Well, right. You should sit in a room by yourself <laughs> on Women's Day. I'm, on Women's Day, I think it would be better if if none of you were yeah, on okay, camera. Yeah, okay, I can't disagree with that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's that's very fair. Um, for the life of me, uh, Bailey Myers, I was struggling with this fact. We we went to a um, a brewery and. On the special menu, there was like special events, and one said Women's Day. I'm like, oh, this will be so funny if I take a picture, mm -hmm. me and Mike are in it. And then I swear to God that I sent it to mm -hmm. you. I only you did. have you did you sent it yesterday. Well, yes, I thought I sent it <laughs> then and there in the moment. And then I looked through my the history of my phone. I sent it to like another friend that had like a B name. And cool. uh, what did they think of it? Wow. They were very confused because I haven't spoken <laughs> to them in years. They probably don't were know. Were they who also I am. a woman? No. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like, why making fun of Women's Day? That's weird. <laughs> God, Jan, I didn't know you were like this. Now, fuck. This is crazy. Yeah, she, she what a really crazy am. first impression for them of who you are now. econ homework. Home. Apparently, I won $10,000. Did you hear? I saw your tweet, and I feel really happy for you. Thank you. <laughs> that's, what, that's, what I was, that's what I was looking for. <laughs> uh, she... Like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> We're sorry. Okay. I'm still just, I'm still just steamed. I wasn't there. Like, I'm so <laughs> mad. <laughs> but you, good for you. That's ten thousand dollars. Is a lot of money. That's great. Yeah, it was, it was, it was nice. We did, we did. You would have been like appreciative. Like, we would have been happier if you were there for sure. Like, it was the typical times where it's yeah. like we could have used a Bailey, one hundred percent. Yeah. Thank you. That's all I ever need to hear. Um, that, true. And you're going next year when that plane <laughs> ticket and everyone goes, wah, like that. Yeah. What if we presented you with a giant check? With yeah. I would take it to a giant as long plane as it's legal tender. Uh, yeah. 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 Oh, God. That was a good bit we had. Oh, but Bailey wouldn't know because we didn't bring her to PAX. We didn't bring yeah. her to PAX in for yeah. the bit. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I'm if good. you guys are making fun inside jokes about PAX, you're doing it intentionally to exclude me at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be in LA at the uh, kind of like uh, May or uh, yeah, May 20th ish. So we can, we can party in, in LA. Yeah. I'm going to Disney World right around that time, but I'll check my calendar and see if I'm here. Uh, I could cancel maybe I'm my plans. just to avoid you. Yeah, I could cancel my plans to go to Disney World with you, too. That's, that's <gasps> Come fun. to Disney World! Yeah. Too easy for Mike to just up and do that. Uh, yeah. 
but but we are dead set. Uh, it's, we're gonna put we're gonna get Nikki. It's gonna be Bailey. It's gonna be Mikey and myself. We're gonna try and go to Disneyland. Uh, It'd be so fun. I mean, I, yeah. I'm going to Disneyland. You can try, but I will be there. <laughs> are you saying something's gonna happen to me before that? No, I'm just, you're just seem like not committal. I'm just saying there's no try. I will be in. He's Disneyland. the Yoda of Disney. There, there yeah. is no try. He will be there 100. percent Okay. Sorry, did you just say Meg Minotti is the Yoda of Disney? I can't stress enough that Yoda is the Yoda of Disney. Damn. <laughs> Damn. You're right. Damn. All right. Well, let's go home, folks. All right. Yeah. Uh, thanks for joining us, everybody. Wow. Uh, how's everyone doing? How's everyone going? Mm, tired. Ready yeah. for the weekend. Ready for the weekend. Yep. Ready Same Ready man. for Easter. Ready for, to, to bring Jesus back into our lives. Yeah. What's good about Friday? Uh, he died. Well, that's not. Is uh, that what's good about it? Well, feels kind of like an insult. I mean, man. listen, in like my opinion, I'm like, not going to let everyone know how I feel about it. But <laughs> I mean, it's good because like he died for our sins. Oh, oh okay. So, right. And like because he did that, we all get to go to heaven. Well, not maybe not all of us, but some of us <laughs> get to go to heaven. Okay, now. all right. Let's talk about video no. games. No, first, I can't go to Boston. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then it comes back extra Catholic. Uh, Bailey, you're a fellow West Coaster, born and bred. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you yep. do you think I was dying the whole time? Any time we stepped outside, I froze to death. Uh, when you guys it, were visiting or when you were in Boston, do you mean? When we were we out were in Boston. Boston oh, I see. Like I see. Yeah. 28, 30 degrees. And I was very ill equipped. Not like Dan. Yeah, it looks cold. How, how did you so first day? Sorry. Big wind on the first day. It made it very cold. Hmm. Kind of like commiserate, you know, just like, you know, get you. In yeah. You know, I'd commiserate. I think weather here was kind of cold too. It was like 60 degrees, yeah. 65 He's, maybe. Yeah. The sun was out. It, it was That's nicer on the. And I started on the last day, which is good because I walked around a bunch. I fucked up some tea real good at the at the tea yeah. party museum. USA, oh, fuck USA. Yeah, man. It was great. They gave me a character card when I like got in there. Like we all like got to be somebody who was actually involved in the tea party and had like details about me. I was very excited about that. Uh, I, I kind of tested the waters like really role playing it, and I got the feeling that maybe I should uh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> so I settled <laughs> back a little bit, but it was uh, fun. I remember on the way to breakfast one day, uh, Lucy was talking about her her time visiting a museum, and then as soon as she started talking, everyone treated her very differently. Uh, yeah, she mentioned that. Too. I was just gonna say she was like, "I went to that museum, and then I opened my English mouth." That's how she sounds in my head. <laughs> uh-huh. And then I, they were so mean to me. <laughs> <laughs> death triangle. Uh, death triangle. <laughs> right, death triangle. They were so mean to me. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, it, has she had just been... talked like that, it would have been fine, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. She would have been fine. Uh, I want to do a little bit of show and tell before we talk about any potential games we've been playing. Um, yeah. I, I shot a bunch of random miscellaneous B-roll, and who knows if that'll ever if I will ever have the time to edit that down into a vlog. But uh, I couldn't help but show this off to the crew when we were at breakfast one day. This is a, a smartphone cage sp- made by Small Rig, and man, let me tell you, all look at this shit! Look at this shit! Right? That's intense. Boom! Right? Whoa! The top flips up, and then just like a toaster strudel or a toaster pop tart, slide your phone in. Bam! I don't have uh, the handles on me here, but you can uh, uh, hold on. Hold on. He looks really comfortable. Looks yeah. really good. Yeah. So the, yeah, he was like carrying it around like it was uh, uh, one of those uh, like steady cams, and then right. he attached a oh. bunch of lenses to it and stuff. And apparently, the I new iPhone stuff like yeah. Sorry, you, you just thought he was showing Jan a phone case. A- I thought he bought a BDSM cage for his phone, and I was like, that's right. cool. He I guess. Did, Mine he, has dinosaurs on it. Jan does love to cage his phones, yes, and just like, step on them and stuff. Now I feel like I, I feel really insecure about my incredibly boring phone case now. All yeah, you sudden. should. You look I do have a cool basic. one. I have a cool oh, Epcot three, background, though. Three, have six, you guys eight. seen Al Pacino's phone case? It's Shrek. It's, it's Shrek. Yeah. Yeah. Phone case. Yep. If Al Pacino can have a Shrek phone case, Mike Minotti, you can at the very least have something better than that. Step it up. They, they always shit. have like fancy ones at Disney, and they're like kind of expensive and look cheap. To be honest, Jan, they I see that you're ready cheap. to tell us more about no, no, your no, no, phone no, no. case. And that I think that's one of the biggest downsides of like the the case game at Disney parks is they don't yeah. look great. Or no, great. you have to get off brand ones that are also actually cheap. I think yeah. looking yeah. cheap look is part of the sense. cool. I mean, the Shrek one that Al Pacino has doesn't look expensive, and it looks great because nope. Al's he wearing looks, it. 
<laughs> That's true. So That's confidently. True. Yeah. Um, but also on on the cage here, the BDSM phone cage uh, <laughs> is uh, a bunch of like little quarter inch screws across. You can't really see it. I mean, that doesn't yeah. play for audio listeners. That's anyway. where the pleasure comes from. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you can attach uh, two handles to any of these ports, and then suddenly oh, wow. you got a little Looking phone dead. cage. Look at that. Yeah, Man, it seems like you like didn't do much to put that in there. Does that feel secure to you? Yeah, I mean, like I'll just wave yeah. my phone around like yeah, that. Yeah, the phone's ah. titanium. Haven't you seen yeah. the ads? It, and like the iPhones these days have like built-in kind of steady cam stuff too, so you don't have to worry about the wobble as much as you're walking around, right? So we're like we don't need like expensive video cameras really anymore. Oh yeah, right? I mean, like th that's been like the common thing is is like when I'll talk to like video friends or uh, folks wanting to break out into video or like do content creation. I don't think you need like a fancy schmancy camera. If you have like a smartphone, you're fine enough. Yeah, but does this shoot in log? This does shoot in log, <laughs> Jeff Grubb. <laughs> and it shoots externally to us you to an SSD. Oh drive. shit. Wow. Uh, but the other neat thing is that like uh there at the lens part where the camera would be, uh it has like a magnetic ring where you just slap on a filter. And then now I have a variable N D filter, which uh makes me happy inside. Uh, and that's that's all I wanted to what share. What does that do? Uh, okay, so Indy's a, nuts. a variable ND <laughs> is uh, a neutral density filter. So, like when you're, oh. you know, when uh, something looks blown out when you're shooting outside, uh, because yeah. the outside is so much brighter than what yeah, you're seeing is of the inside. Sun. Yeah, because that of the makes sun. Sun up there, yeah. This yeah. neutralizes the sun, so you can see outside. Oh, it's like, Dang, it's like a pickle to, to the moon. <laughs> it's what pick, yes, neutralizes the moon, <laughs> neutralizes the sun. Exactly. It's, it's, it pulls a piccolo. Uh, yep. And yeah. Yo, small rig, small rig. Cut the check, y'all. This is like free promo for y'all. Come on. Yeah. I, do do you, I was very excited when you were showing me this. It looked very cool. Um, also, the 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 um the little wireless lobs we were using for around packs were actually really, really good. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think I heard any of the actual footage audio that you got. Uh, it does sound good because I was curious about that because those seemed really handy. Yeah, it was super clean. Uh, we hmm. were using the Rode Wireless Go 2, I believe. That sounds right. Um, and like those are set to, I had them set to auto record. So those Jimmy Jams were like on the little lav. Uh, Clippy Dippies right. were recording constantly as long as they were within range of the receiver, and the uh, the mic was actually pretty omnidirectional, and it was it was pretty good. It could pick up uh, whoever was wearing it, but also whoever was a uh, near um, pretty close close enough. Yeah, good, good enough, good enough. All I'm thinking cool. now is like, oh, maybe I should become one of those like theme park bloggers next time I go and get this stuff and just walk around. And talk about my thoughts and whatnot. Mike Minotti, I need you to say, I need you to hear these words as insultingly as I mean them. Hell it is yeah, crazy to me you're not already a theme park vlogger. Well, yeah. I, I just don't live close. If, if I like lived in Orlando or LA, I 1 million percent would be, but I'm not there that often, right? That's the only issue. Okay. That's it. Sounds I'm sure like, that's the sounds reason. Like excuses. Well, hey, it is to me. <laughs> Those people are there <laughs> constantly. Like they live there. They That's go like true. multiple times a week. I just can't. I wish it'd be fun, but no. Uh, you know what? I, I was gonna say, Mike. Let's vlog the whole time we're there on our little uh, uh <laughs> fabulous yeah, Disneyland. Maybe, maybe we'll vlog a little bit of the time that we're there. Maybe That's what I was thinking. Let's just enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, we'll make content <laughs> expensive, baby. Mm. Okay, okay. Expensies for Mikey. Expensies and a hot bowl of riggies for Mikey. Um, <laughs> some riggies, we'll make some proggies. <laughs> yeah. I've been playing a lot of Dragon's Dogma 2. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. That's dog fine. in you. I've I've got that dog in me. And uh, uh and also outside. She's sleeping right now. Um Aww. Uh, Scout, please. <laughs> the game, unfortunately, has been performing poorer and poorer each time I boot it up and any and every oh, no. time I go into a town. Yeah, towns are rough. Yeah. Um, I don't know how the performance has been for y'all, but like when I'm going like in the outer world, it's fine. Um, and I just absolutely adore the shenanigans that happen. I never feel safe running anywhere. I never feel safe going to going to camp. Uh, I feel like I can never relax in this game, and it's good. It's great. Yeah. I love it that way. Yeah, yeah. It's the kind of game where it's like I um I can't tell how I'm gonna feel about the story or 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 the the narrative, the lore, um the codexes, whatever. 
Uh, but the stories I come away with after playing it for a little bit, uh, this happened to me, I did this dumb thing, and then the next dumb thing happened, and that was really great, or I was in town, and I was just trying to, like, you know, talk to a merchant, and then a cyclops came in and started throwing people. Um, that stuff rules, and it's nonstop in this game. And uh, the more I play it, the more I discover it's like, oh, that the game is so seamless into to letting those things happen that it, it kind of is you're always going to run into something if you play for any extended period of time and if you kind of do just throw yourself into these situations where it's like you know like you that that uh griffin has way too much health you should just run away i'm like no nah, i'm gonna go get on its back let's find out what happens and then dumb stuff happens and i end up having a great time and it's uh it's a fun game to stream i think because of that but um yeah. even when i was playing off stream i just kept running into scenarios like that and, and really enjoying it. So yeah, I think it's very much a me kind of game. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to be interested to see like where it like falls in the next couple of weeks as people get more time with it. If they aren't getting what they need out of the narrative, if they start to turn on it a little bit, or if people sort of get on its wavelength, because I don't think you could just come at it and be like, Oh, I'm going to play this the way I want to. I think you kind of have to get on its wavelength a little bit. Yeah. I think uh, the thing that bothered me initially about the combat is just like a lack of locking on unless I, drastically miss something and i'm just nope, no, lock nope. no lock on no lock on it it's Thank sloppy God. combat in kind of a fun way yeah. um some of the abilities like do do like kind of like a soft lock on though so like that's handy oh yeah enough. for sure um but i i was telling mike and grub before we we started the show today that i'm constantly tempted by seeing how my pawns have different vocations um for me that i kind of want to try a new class like the uh, grub yesterday watching you play the thief look like you were having a drastically different experience than I've been having because you're zipping around all over the place. Yeah. Um, I've been playing the two-handed warrior build uh, that uses the great swords and hammers, and my games are completely so much more slower, and like I'm moving around less uh, than you were, and that made me want to try that class immediately. And then my pawn, uh, Bonesaw, is an archer, and... Bone saw is just jumping all over the place, drop kicking fools. Bone saw's ready. Bone saw. Bone saw's ready. Yeah, you know, like a lot of games that have this kind of job system, like the prospect of leveling up jobs and finding new jobs kind of pushes me forward more so than the narrative does, right? Mm -hmm. And I do love that this game has that job system. I also like it is the systems I think are the big draw here. I think the pawn system is a big part of that. I'm always surprised at what the pawns are capable of like i i recently like came across this uh treasure chest i was up on this cliff and i couldn't reach it and my one pawn has the like ability where they can kind of launch you upwards mm -hmm. and i thought it was just for like oh getting on like you know some troll's head but he was just me it was like oh i'll get this and he like went over there and like did the position i just walked up to him and he immediately launched me up right there and i was able to get the chest i was like oh that's cool yeah, the, the pawns are the right level, uh, like we talked about this, the right balance of dumb and smart. Like, they do stuff like that kind of on their own, and they'll tell you that they're doing it. They also tell you when they're learning from something that you did. And and, and then in combat, it's like, no, I'm just going to spam flames at this thing, and then if you ask for help, I'll help you. I'm like, yeah, this is kind of what I want. I want, I want everything to feel kind of messy because I think it, it makes it feel like, oh, anything can happen in this game. I do enjoy that they're kind of just going for it any time we enter combat. They're going yeah. all out constantly. Yeah. And um, then that's the makes it really fun to have all these different kinds of pawns. So it's like, I do try to keep that uh, like, oh, everyone has a different job. I have my healer obviously with me all the time. And then my main pawn, Dark Mitch, I think is a, a fighter. I think he's a fighter and he's, I, I keep upgrading him and his abilities <laughs> are getting cooler and cooler. And, <laughs> and then um, I have, uh, usually I bring someone in that, that is like a, a high level archer or high level mage or something like that. And just having someone in, like, you know, throwing flames, someone dropping back, doing the archer, and then me and Dark Mitch, like, getting in there, climbing on whatever, and, and just hit, beating the hell out of it is just a good time. It, like, feels like yeah. so much is happening. Bailey, I think you'd actually really enjoy this game based off of uh, what I, I re recollect you digging last year. Uh, I feel like there's yeah. a lot of opportunity for dumbness. I that's what it sounds like. I've been reading a lot about all the stuff that's been pissing people off, and I'm like, that sounds so fun, actually. Though, yes, like I'm right. just I'm I'm deep in like a dragon right now, and when I'm not playing like a dragon, I'm playing Bellatro, <laughs> or <laughs> or the new Stardew Valley update, which is great. Oh snap! Oh, oh, oh. I, I kind of want to start another farm, and there's just absolutely no time. I no time. I, I feel that. Call. I don't know. I feel I that call hard. One of the things in the new update is multiplayer. You can now do up to eight people. 
Just a fun mm. fact from me to you. Oh, last time I did, I was only able to marry one person. <laughs> oh, okay. Hey, yo. That's uh, no, Michael. Like multiplayer have a, game. They have a Meadowlands farm <laughs> now where they start mm. you with a chicken coop and two chickens. Oh, and so, like, you start the farm with that. And then and there's, like, fancy blue grass that the animals love and crave. And there's, like... Oh, so you can make an animal yeah. farm. Yeah, basically, mm. yeah. And there's new crops and, and new events. And it's, oh, it's so fun. It's so fun and cute. <sighs> well, we have more I'm time sorry, over the I summer. Know, a multiplayer Dragon game. Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Stardew Valley is one I'm always thinking about going back to as well. I would like to, like, check that out and do some multiplayer games in that. Yeah, I've never uh, Stardewed. Um, and really? I feel, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never, never, never. What? Uh, Wait, what? I've never star dude. Star, star, star. I, I never star dude. Jan E. Jan Do Valley. <laughs> I'm just yeah, trying to we're think. Not, we're not making Janny happen. I fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what's uh, so cool? Speaking of animal handling, I just watched Goose pee on my new comforter just now. Oh. I'm watching oh, no, now that try, to ba- try to bury it. I'm, I'm sorry. like awesome. Thanks, animals buddy. are dumb. <laughs> animals are so dumb. Hold on. <laughs> One second. I'm pissed about this. Goose. Goose. Uh, Literally. Uh, it is well, upsetting that animals just pee on things. He ran away. Yeah, what's their keys. deal? Yeah, they're just kind of mean. I, I I got Penny on the pee pads only recently because she's getting old and like even worse than before. Oh. So I have the pads for her now. And sometimes she like will find like because I have two of them and the spot she likes to go and she will sometimes somehow find that one sliver of carpet and just go on there anyways. And I'm yep. like, oh, Penny, I animals. Yeah, <laughs> uh, so gross. I, yeah, yes. I have I have a like a handheld like one of those bissell like little green like steamer things because goose simply loves to do crimes so i'm gonna steam clean my bed after this i guess Mm. on friday afternoon uh has anyone day has anyone else been playing anything else they'd like to chat i played the stellar blade demo (laughs) how was that did you see tits and ass we yes. saw we saw um, body parts be encased in a another skin and then still jiggle very much, like quite a lot. And I then the found camera a lot about myself. The, the, yeah, the camera doesn't do the modest thing where it's like well, we're not going to let you look at the butt crack. This game's like look at the butt crack. It's right there. Very butt crack central. Yeah, butt crack heavy game. Um, it is a decent action game. It's what it feels like. It feels like a pretty good action game. Uh, and one that if you are a normal person, you're going to have a normal time with. Uh, and you want to turn into some culture war thing, have at it. I'm going to ignore you starting now. Um, but, but actually playing the game itself, it's like, yeah, I, I, it, it wants to be sort of, I think, in between a Devil May Cry and a From Software action game uh, where... They the parry is the big thing, not the dodge. You get the dodge as the first thing in the skill tree, so it is early on, and perfect dodging is also part of the combat. But they emphasize parrying first, and so it's like to me that feels more like FromSoft. Uh, and so I'm like trying to like in every enemy I fight, standing right at them, trying to let them come right at me, and then trying to see if I can figure out the parry window. And I, I think for a lot of enemies, you're like as you, they get more difficult and bigger, it seems like that that's going to be a necessity the more you play. Um, I was playing through OBS, so I was getting a little bit of a delay, so I think that was kind of messing up the window for me. I'm going to go play native on the PS5. I bet it's going to feel a lot better uh, that way, because I'm a little mm. surprised that they would have a difficult timing window on that. It, like, the kind of game it is, it doesn't feel like it's trying to be exactly like Sekiro, um, but, you know, at the very least, I, I think once I give that a shot, I'll see how I feel about all that. But I, as it is, the game is, is pretty decent. Uh, I, I think most people are going to find it to be a decent time. Yeah, the game looks uh, okay. Uh, someone's computer crashed. Uh, <laughs> right, Bailey got swarmed by cats, one of whom peed on her uh, bed, and then like her, her computer, computer crashed. crashed. Felt the injury. Oh man. Yeah, I-, I like to imagine one of the cats unplugged it. They're just uh, really <laughs> after her today. She texted me, "Goose's fault." I assume. <laughs> yes, I assume too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it looked. It, it also fun. looks really good. Like yeah, visually... and, and, and guess what? I like that the character's attractive. That's cool. That's fine with me. Like, wow. yeah, they did a good job of designing that stuff. People How like, brave of you, Jeff. I know. Thank you. I want to stand up and, yeah. and uh, people I mean, should it, applaud me. It is certainly to the point of being like so ridiculously TNA that it's like, uh, of course, it's not, not like the word isn't pathetic, but it no. is like, no, it, OK, it, it, it's um, a little right. eye rolly. Like, yeah, I, yes, look, I don't mind looking at it, but it is a little bit like I want to point and laugh. 
Yeah, of course I do, and I do do that as well. Like I'm like, okay, fine. She's a, an attractive character design, cool. It is also kind of absurd how much you are putting the butt in my face all the right. time, and I'm gonna make fun of that too. We it's can pandering. have both. Yeah, and like, look, I'm a, That's I'm a Disney fan. Obviously, I love being pandered too, but like, I don't feel great about it. <laughs> like, I'm not proud of myself for right. like eating up the pandering. Yeah, that's the that is the and that is the thing that's kind of happening with this game is like people are like I am proud to be pandered to. Like, right. Oh, that's the weird thing about it. Are right? you because yeah. you, you're a big boy? Is that like you're a big big baby boy? Yeah. yeah okay, chill out over there. Yes. Um, Go ahead. It Mike. looks so much like near. I don't think it's a problem, but it is again. It's a little bit like of a slight peg against like oh you didn't have like much of your own ideas aesthetically. Yeah. Huh? That's that's like, correct. I think that's like, exactly it, what this game was. Even more so than like like Liza P obviously looked a lot like um uh the uh what's the souls like Bloodborne Bloodborne but it was like uh but like there's a twist here kind of like I don't even know if there's a twist here it is at least what we saw in that demo which isn't a lot it could go in other places it just was near yep I, I, and again like that happens a lot of times when the game like near comes around and it's uh influential gets a whole dev team like hey we should make one of those. And that, so that's what they did. They made one of those. And I bet it's not going to have the depth of storytelling or the high quality of music or even like uh, uh, the, the quality of characters that Nier did. But I bet it's going to be a decent time. Yeah, I bet it's going to be just fine. Like, yeah, yeah. and I, I had a good time with what I played so far. I, it's just, uh, oh, man, uh, the more we were talking about the how the Internet is treating that game and not the whole Internet, but certain pockets of the Internet. It's like, Jesus Christ, guys. It's not even a joke anymore to go touch grass. Literally fucking go outside and talk to another human being in person, you fucking it, dumb fuck. It, and it's, like, annoying because it, it does erase games like Bayonetta and Nier. It's like, those games are not that old. In fact, Bayonetta came out, like, what, a year ago? Two years ago? Bayonetta yeah. 3 was, like, a year or so ago, yeah. I yeah. Mean, these, yeah. These games are, exist and are out there, and you guys act yeah. like you're, like, parched in the desert, and this is your first oasis you've seen in 20 years. Um yeah, I, we don't need to make it this culture war savior. I, I think that it's doing a disservice to this game. They're also they they're not thinking of you. They're just thinking about like the the horny folks out there that just want to play an action game. And yeah. and, and thank th thanks y'all. Uh, anyone else got anything? On behalf else of all of them, or yeah, 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 yeah. On behalf of all of them. Are you a representative? Uh, yes. Yeah, an, an ambassador of sorts. You know? Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, here I am. Sure, 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 sure. To, to sh share the, the good word. Uh, uh, what do you guys think of that South Park game? Let's talk about it here so we don't have to talk about it on Bombcast next week. Uh, I guess it wasn't. <sighs> I feared it might have been worse. I was shocked that it is a co op thing, <laughs> like a co op mission based, maybe run based game. I just assumed that it was some kind of PvP experience. Uh, and I'm still not sure why it isn't that. It was pretty simple. The South Park humor mostly worked okay. I actually think it looked fine. I wasn't that thrown off by, like, the 3D South Park look. I think they made it look okay. It was really simple. And it was, on normal difficulty, it felt, like, very mindless. Uh, it, it is, like, the most 5 out of 10, maybe. Like, okay, yes, this is, uh, like, the oh. baseline. This is the new most middle game I could possibly think of. Yeah, I, I think that's completely fair. That's kind of how I felt coming out. Like, I, I did not hate it. I was enjoying spending time with you guys, just sure. shooting shooting the shit, playing a video game that was inoffensive. Um, I, although I think the game would be would actually be mad to be described as inoffensive because it's South Park, but it is. It kind um, of is. It's very, yeah, it's, 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 it's yeah. vanilla. Like, I hate it's plain. When people, people say these things, it's sometimes like a little like, oh, you know, I've heard that before, but it is a video game, right? Yes. And yeah, how I feel absolutely. about it. Yep. Yeah, it does feel a little toothless. Uh, just yeah, because like that's how to train your dragon. Oh, okay, sorry. Oh uh, my god. <laughs> uh, just because like they're leaning on the same jokes that we've already heard before, and it yeah. is also very odd that they're continuing the timeline that's been established through the what I think is the better South Park games with uh, right. Stick of Truth and Fractured uh, But Whole. Right, um, still the new kid. Like it's still that timeline. They're right, referencing still the events kid, yep. of those games. Haven't <laughs> like, we known each other long enough that I'm not the new kid anymore? No, no, not at all. Um, yep. Yeah, it feels perfectly fine. But even then, Grub, it, I feel like there are several other games that are 
uh, fill well, that niche, right? Yeah, I mean, and you, I mean, you said it about this game. I mean, it it immediately falls to that bucket of we had a good time streaming it. We're never going to play it again. And that yeah. is, I'm not going to ever load that game up again. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, one day this this specific group here will will have that same conversation about Suicide Squad. Better, be fucking yeah. better. One day. One day. Uh, I, I want to play more Suicide Squad, but for some reason, when I play it on my stream, not as many people want to watch. <laughs> I, as soon as I was done writing the script for that, like once the video went live on the channel, I uninstalled it. I was like, cool, I'm done with it forever. I did what that with see if I did that with Skull, Skull and Bones before the video was even up. <laughs> <laughs> what if we waited until Mike's birthday to play it on? on oh, that'd be great. Aww. Imagine how much exciting content will be out by then. Yeah, <laughs> so many multiverse jokers will be in the game. Oh, at that I can't point. wait. <laughs> yeah, Salt Joker uh, stream. For, breaking news for the Suicide Squatters out there: uh, Joker's now available. And if you're asking yourself, I thought the Joker died in that universe. Nah, it's a different universe. Joker that gets ported into this timeline. <laughs> we are. We're really gonna have to have a multiverse reckoning here soon. It's getting super out of control. I think it just—I think it just fizzles out, right? We don't get a reckoning. We just like everyone pretends they didn't do that, and then they start making <laughs> like the next Spider-Man movie. They're gonna pretend it was the last one wasn't a multiverse movie. They might reference it, but mostly they'll just kind of avert their gaze. Oh yeah, yeah. I think like it's just gonna be like Man on the Street, like Peter Parker stories from here on out. Hopefully, yes. I mean, totally. after Madam Web, really changed the sure game. yeah you shout out yeah, to Sydney Sweeney that. yeah <laughs> so good. everyone should watch the Madam Web Honest trailer by the way I wrote on that uh, one ooh. okay yeah. I meant to ask you uh also check out Bailey's uh, video that you you she put out uh that you put out Bailey about your impressions of Madam Web it, it was a uh, it convinced me to watch it and uh my 13 howdy. minute long rant that I did at the beginning of a stream and I was just like I'll just put this on YouTube <laughs> yeah <laughs> it was amazing just and I, then, like, I didn't believe you and then yeah. I watched it I was trying not to spoil it but I honestly like I said it there and I'll say it again I think I could talk about the movie for several hours and there would still be something that would completely take you by surprise watching it it's a wonderful movie <laughs> uh, I can't please wait watch, watch it, it. Uh, yeah. her web it's, connects it's, us all <laughs> no man is a web island yeah okay any any other games y'all want to talk about before we take a uh quick break and get to the hot topic pepper no Grinder I, looked fun when you're yeah, playing pepper that Grinder, I'll, I'll, I'll play more of that and i'll talk about that on the uh, big boy bomb cast for sure oh uh a game that i can finally say that i have been playing uh that i'll talk about on the big boy bomb cast is harold halibut oh you've been what? playing that oh yeah okay. holy shit how did the <laughs> fuck does that game work are, okay, are you just flabbergasted by the tech and the way it looks, or are you enjoying the video game? I am curious about this. More flabbergasted by the tech as sure. as the early stages where, where I'm at right now. Um, but just, um, as, as we all know, I don't like claymation. I'm okay with stop motion. And um, how they're able to pull this off just seems like an incredible technical feat. And I hope, I hope uh, that there's a lot more to the game than the right. the early bits and what the trailers suggest to kind of keep me hooked because I do want to see all of it because it seems like a labor of uh, love that the devs it does uh, did to get this game even out there or even working. Um, I'm going to ask, uh, hold on, I'm going to make a poll real quick and then we'll go to break. No, you know what? I'll make the poll and then we'll go to break. We'll, we'll go to break and then we'll go to the poll. <laughs> okay, to the black yeah. now. <laughs>
I need I need new segment music. I need I need like maybe flames and then like a sick metal guitar riff to so I can like turn on this effect and go. The hot topic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's good. Thank you. Oh god. Can we, can we sing it like the hot pocket theme? Hot topic. Okay, oh, I like that. Oh, damn it. You, you put it in my head. Now I can't not say pocket. Um, <laughs> there was a food truck at... Yes, Pax I, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> saying that we've revolutionized the way you hold food. And then we ordered the food because we need a little sneaky snack. And then I, I'm looking at it and I'm like, this is just an empanada. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. And then like, and like they had like, it was like the... Uh, italian sausage epinata and i was like this is actually just a hot pocket i liked it don't get me wrong but it was a hot pocket uh this week's hot topic we're celebrating <laughs> the uh did i say pocket again no, no you I said just, it right I, but but just, he could tell, you could tell we could tell you struggled you... with it yeah <laughs> yeah sometimes my uh, my mouth don't work um yeah absolutely i get it what that mouth do? uh what that mouth do I'm sorry, everyone. I'm gonna go take a long nap this weekend. And be <laughs> on Tuesday. You want me to introduce a segment? I can do it. Game of the quarter. We're celebrating the fiscal uh, end of the fiscal quarter by by. We're going to unofficially officially crown game of the quarter. Yeah, uh, game of have, the year so far. This will have no <laughs> bearing and no effect on the actual game of the year that happens later in the year. Just one or will it? We can't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not pulling up an Excel sheet. I am not pulling up the Eurovision yeah. program. Yeah, well, two extra points to whatever wins right now for yeah. final game of the year. That won't confuse things. And we won't tell anyone else that isn't on this yeah. panel. That's right. We just decided. So. They don't even we're know. Just, we're the smart ones, right? That's right. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, we're the fan favorites. Everyone loves us. Yeah. The fan babies. We wouldn't get uh, caught up on like a stupid geography quiz, right? No, no, no we're not going to make everyone feel uncomfortable at the beginning <laughs> of the voicemail dump truck yesterday. Like that would ever happen. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that I, I, anyway, uh, I threw into the, if you're watching live, I threw into the chat there uh, a link that Grub sent me uh, that the homies of GameSpot put together of 2024 game release schedule. We're going to just loosely use that to uh, build are should we come up with 10 we could totally come up with 10 right uh i think we'd probably come up with 10 let's see i bet we can at least come up with five no problem easy yeah easy. we'll see all right uh i'm gonna pull up a word doc i'll try and throw that up on screen for folks uh but what do we think so far is the game of the quarter should we just go around and each nominate one real quick maybe do two rounds of nominating one yeah, yeah let's, like let's do that do we want to mm -hmm. snake around or just like circle around uh, let's circle around and uh, let's start with bailey Bellatro. Interesting. Just do, never would have, never part. would have predicted never that. Would, it's it's so funny. I think I, I remember watching your first Bellatro stream, Bailey. Uh -huh. And at first, you were kind of like, I don't know. I didn't mean to upset you, Bailey. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, what no. do you think Bailey would have said about why she likes Bellatro so much? Uh, it oh, makes no. the brain feel good. Okay, she's gone. She's back again. She's gone. I think she's gone. I think she's gone. Uh, oh, she's back. Well, heard that. And more. better than ever. Get here. Um, Bellatro's good because no! uh, the cards, you put them in the, down and then they score oh, a lot it. of points. And the uh, dopamine. I mean, honestly, you... what else can you really say about Bellatro at this point? That it, it really is just, it feels really good to play. Uh, yeah, you know, I love a good roguelike. And this is uh, one of the best ones. I love how... Good of a job it does taking those poker mechanics. I think most people are familiar with. And if you are, you learn them pretty quickly here. Yeah. It, you know, it really does do a lot of fun things. And at first you're like, oh, I can do this build. And like basic stuff like, oh, flushes, uh, you know, three of a kind. And you can get real wacky stuff the more you play. And it oh, does really do a good job incentivizing that. how you keep playing with the, you know, like, you know, oh, I want to beat it with this deck. I want to beat it on like this hard mode and I'm beating it on that hard mode unlocks this new deck and then you're unlocking new jokers the whole time so there's reasons to keep going back to it yeah and it's like a lot of that stuff is like the basic uh, roguelite stuff it, uh oh oh no great time talk about me <laughs> oh no okay bailey we appreciate you thank you for making the gonna... time for us today <laughs> oh bailey you might, uh -oh. Be in uh -oh. you might be in restart router mode if you haven't done that yet oh, this sucks 
<laughs> I'm glad that only the uh, very angry exclamations are getting through. The, yeah, the Bailey and the machine. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I thought I was a. I should. I should. I saw something. I should have said something. As soon as we started, and Bailey's video wasn't looking good. I was like, mm, I wonder how this is going to go. What, Bailey, I think you're kind of back now. Nope, never mind. No, no, she's not back. No, she's not back. She's not All back. Right. She's got to restart. Okay, she's got to restart right. Rowdy's. Well, Rowdy we'll see if Bailey really can join us okay. for the remainder of the pod, but uh, we'll we'll keep going, trucking along. All right. I'm just gonna uh, just ruining oh, the podcast now wait. because of my <laughs> fucking computer. No, she, I, I think we're, I think we are all getting her in like uh, fits and starts. Yeah, because I don't even wait, get wait, it. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, no, keep talking, gentlemen. Oh uh, yes, no problem. Okay, so Bellatro, Mike, do you have another game you want to add on to the list? Yeah, I think Final I, Fantasy VII Rebirth would be my first pick, uh, actually. Um, uh, I love the remake a lot. I think that Rebirth is actually better. The scale of it is just absolutely incredible. Um, I love all the side stuff, like to, like uh, the stuff it makes me do, and then the stuff that is actually side stuff. I think all that stuff is fun and goofy and ridiculous, whether it's like doing the military marches or suddenly I'm playing like a carnival shooting game. Queen's Blood, just an all-time incredible mini game. Maybe the best in-game card game ever. Uh, very good boss fight. Still probably the best like combat system of any game. I just love the way fighting in this works. And, you know, it was also good in Remake, but now we have even more characters, and they all still feel really unique, and they're doing weird, wacky things. Even Kate Sith. Kate Sith, who was such a non-factor in original Final Fantasy VII for me, is a really fun character here and kind of a more interesting character. All-time great soundtrack. Just love, 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 love the game. Yeah. I, I think we can hear you now. Uh, I don't have a Bailey on my end. I have a frozen Bailey. Uh, yeah, who I looks, don't have a uh, Bailey window. Maybe if I upset. refresh. I think I have to go. Uh, Bailey, I I'm think so sorry. I'm I'll, I'll, we'll we'll see you on the other side. Having, dog. So yeah, if, if, if you, Bailey, if you want to restart start the PC and the modem, that might work. But other than that, yeah. Get Bye. to talk about Bellagio. Talk about Love Queen's you, blood. I'm gonna go. Yeah, I can't see her. Bye. <laughs> Uh, all right. Can I can see him. Tell him I can, can see okay, you. Okay, Mike, she, she can see you. Tell I, him. I can't see you. I see you. We're doing Avatar. <laughs> I see you. All right. Um. Yeah, F Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is kind of one that I was going to say Patricia. first, Mike. Yeah, I know. I'm very predictable. I, okay, well. okay. Bailey wants me to tell you all that I am her Patricia Arquette. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I would have gone with uh, Patrick Swayze. Or, of medium. Or, right, and, and Whoopi medium. Goldberg. Sean, okay. please keep this audio in for right now because it's gold. <laughs> Have fun with this one, Sean. <laughs> Bailey. She's still there. Bailey is saying, sorry, Sean. She clapped so good this time. I, I she hear did. her. She clapped really well. Sean says, whatever you want, Chief. Lol. <laughs> I'm going to claw really close to the microphone. Don't keep that in, Sean. I'm Okay, bye, Bailey. Thank you. Sorry. Bye. You think she's on Wi-Fi or what? Uh, it's a baby. Uh... <laughs> oh, yeah. you think she's? Think she's not hardwired in? Yeah, there's, a, there's a chance. Oh, yeah, know, I, just, I didn't want to say anything because I don't want Sean to get mad at her. But you, you yeah. live in like uh, a house with other folks. It's hard. Yeah, you can't, sometimes that, right? you don't have a choice. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Oh shit! Now you uh, can just drill holes and stuff. Well, yeah, you're allowed to do that when you're rented in place. Definitely, yeah. Uh, I would, I would put Prince of Persia: The Lost Crown on Hell our yeah. list. Uh, that's mm -hmm. a game that um, immediately feels good the second you pick it up. Moving the character around is is fantastic. The combat actually is is really engrossing right away. Um, it feels like you have a lot of control to get in, do an attack, get out. Um, there's uh, and then it gets everything gets deeper the more you play especially the locomotion getting around the world. Uh, you have so many abilities at the end of that game to do such cool stuff. And then you realize you can like sprinkle in like the, uh, the, 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 the shadow that you can leave behind that you can then warp to using that in combat when it's like, Oh, that's a, no, that's a getting around tool. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, that can also, also be a combat tool. And a lot of bosses force you to use it. And 
once that happens and you can and you realize you can use that in any fight it just continues to open up what's possible in terms of uh how the the combat can feel in that game uh and then it has great challenges to uh, like really stress your ability to do platforming and the combat and it's just it's great from top to bottom i really enjoyed it it's one of my favorite metroidvania games of all time yeah, and I, I like it uh, just being a throwback to like the, the 2D Prince of Persia because I was kind of getting yeah. really tired and it felt like they were running out of ideas of what to do with like the 3D Prince of Persia's. They definitely um, had some struggles there, yes. Yeah. I enjoyed that last one with uh, the prince with the really long scarf and you had the companion, um, but it did. Oh, like not, ran that, out of... not the last one. That was the reboot. Then they unbooted yeah. it with that other uh, game, it was Forgotten Nerd Sands or something. Nerd yeah. Sands? Okay. Yeah, they did Prince of Persia, uh, Sands of Time, then uh, the, the the edgy one, then Warrior the, Within, Warrior yeah. Within, Two Thrones, then just Prince of Persia, and then that fourth one that went back to the trilogy timeline. Uh, I think about the reboot, unboot all the time. <laughs> yeah, uh, th th this game really stands out though as, a, as an early favorite for me this year. It's, oh yeah, it is some of the best two D combat and best two D movement I've ever played. Game I love Metroidvanias a lot. And it is absolutely one of the best of them. Uh, I'm excited for that. We're getting some uh, new content coming out for that in, uh, not too long from now. I think it is actually like on sale at the moment. I know some people with all Ubisoft games are like, I'm going to wait till that goes on sale. What's well, on sale now, like 40%. Yes. So, uh, you know, let's do it. I, I like this game so much, Dan, that you were uh, on some podcast. You said you played some other Metroidvania uh Kinzera, like, Tales of Kinzera Zhao, yes. Yeah, Zao, and you were like, yes. oh, the movement in this, like, actually, like, tr uh, like, 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 is way better than in uh, Prince of Persian. I got mad at you. <laughs> <That's how> <laughs> <laughs> no, no, yeah, please, like, please. I was, I was like, I don't believe you, and, you know, <laughs> just because I like this game so much. Like, nah, that can't be right. I hope it is, though. I'm excited for that game now. Yeah, this, this, uh, I feel like. 2D platforming for me personally kind of peaked around uh, Celeste and just kind of like that white knuckle, like gripping the controller, sure. um, just like really high tense, stressed platforming puzzles. Um, but this game, Prince of Persia, really the levels where that that is the main goal. And I was initially frustrated with some of like the more time sensitive puzzle platforming bits, but. He just nailed this and just every part of the game just feels so well designed that like, yo, we got Prince of Persia. Let's actually do this IP justice by doing the cheat code and making this a castle, uh, a Castlevania game, because that's what just makes everything better. Turns out it makes it all better. Yes, it's mm -hmm. a cheat code. Uh, Jan, I think it's your turn to pick a game. I'm going to nominate like a dragon, infinite wealth. Hell yeah. Uh, Holy smokes, I really enjoyed the original Like a Dragon and um, Ichiban as a character, that whole cavalcade of a bunch of bumbling bozos. Um, and I thought it'd be a bit challenging and to to hopefully recapture that magic with a second game, especially seeing that they were going to add Kiryu back in because I thought we had reached the end of Kiryu's story. I thought maybe is a Sega not showing as much confidence in... Uh, Ichiban as a protagonist that they have to go back and lean on Kiryu constantly um, but the way that this story eventually winds up evolving with wrestling with, with Ichiban's growth um, and Kiryu's um, growth as well him as a character and even if you're not familiar with the Yakuza story you can still gleam a lot of uh, emotional resonance from it and on top of that I think Next to Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, this is a very incredible twist on like turn-based combat yeah. that is super active in a fun way. Um, I think one of the biggest drawbacks for me in the original Like a Dragon is that you had no control at all over positionality when it came to any of the combat. You kind of just had to... Yeah, and it didn't make a difference. It was kind of just yeah. this, like, for show thing, yeah. Yeah, like, you kind of dumb luck your way if, like, an enemy got hit by a car, or if you got hit by a car. Um, but here, it matters so much. I thought it'd be overwhelmed by the social link style uh, relationships with your friends, but it winds up really mattering yep. down the line, not just for, like, adding context to the story, but really to... Um, uh, just level up those relationships so the combat flows even better because at first it feels a little bit disconnected that you're just taking turns with all the characters, but then 
you slowly start adding in those different elements and like it is just you and a bunch of friends beating up a bunch of dumbasses um and there's so much in the game on top of that like uh to, to to try and explore like i spent so long on dandoko island when it was Damn. first unlocked to me like there's a whole animal crossing of this game which i think is absolutely amazing and there's some parts of it that feel better than animal crossing um that i think it is amazing that like this could have totally been a standalone dlc mode that they spin off for like 20 30 bucks even uh that is all in this game and then there's even more with the side quest i know that the side quest kind of fell short for a lot of folks but in my experience with uh the ones that i pursued i really liked it um and ichiban jesus christ what a fucking character what a guy that he he's, he's a dude's dude and um i said this when we were initially talking about it but i think playing games like this where you have more of an adult cast that feels real is ultimately what is hurting my future enjoyment or current enjoyment of of games like the persona series um completely yeah. different games but uh just having those relationships feel adult and having semi-real uh issues that they're dealing with in fantastical ways of course um it, it just hits home harder than um trying to tap into that teeny teeny bopper uh story so far and that's why I think Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth should be in our top 10. Are we going for yeah. a 10? Let's do a 10. We did. Yeah, so let's, we'll, we'll, we'll make it to a 10. Uh, yeah, yeah, that would have been my next one as well. So, uh, And I echo everything. I just think it's such a uh, uh, a really fun ride. And then it does a good job of making you care about those characters. Um, by the end, I was just so in love with all the characters. That, and that their, in, their endings really hit. I think the game's like ending to its plot wasn't like, eh, you're, you're fighting this particular guy. And I'm like, I don't really care about this all that much. Uh, but everything else surrounding that was fantastic. And yeah, the combat is, it was fun the entire time I played the game. So just really enjoyed that. Um, I think the next game I would probably put up there is Helldivers 2, um, a game that I've enjoyed every time I've played it with you all. And then I've played it a, a handful of times now on my own and continue to have a really good time with it. I think it's um, easily going to have a, a good shot at getting to, into our top yeah. five on this list. Yeah, despite a lot of us really mostly primarily playing it on stream, I think for me, this recaptures that feeling of jumping into Apex where um, I don't have to worry about playing with strangers. I can have a good time playing with strangers because the tools in the game uh, and just like everyone's objective is pretty unified where, yep. all right, we're going to work together because we kind of have to. Yeah, and have even to. if you come across players that, uh, that aren't on mic, and that's fine because I'm rarely on mic either, um, everyone is fairly cooperative, but if you wind up matching with someone that is super well experienced and kind of just grinding it out, um, they, and they kind of stonewall you, they eventually wind up having to work with you anyway. Exactly, just to have an yeah. okay to good time. Um, yep. I that's also what like, I noticed too. I also love how they've been rolling out new content. It f makes the world feel alive. Like y'all saw yeah. all those fire tornadoes like a week ago. Yep. Uh, I, I haven't been able to play not second. I feel bad about it because I love the game and I definitely want to go back and play more of it because every time I do play the game, I have a fantastic time. Yep. It's one of those where it's like, um, it, you know, one of those PVE games where you are going in there and you have an objective and it's really intense. And yet it is still also like that fun chat room where you're hanging out and then any moment now, some new thing is happening that is going to be a fun story. I, I mean, I do remember the one time where we were, we were trying to evacuate and... Um, everyone's dying around me and I'm just like kind of jumping up on boxes and I'm just barely avoiding everything and jumping onto the, uh, uh, the evacuation plane at the last second. It just felt so cool and fun and intense because everyone's yelling at me just to survive. So yeah, good moments, good time. Um, I think Mike, that means it's back to you. I've, I, I've also asked Bailey if she's she wants to give me her second game. So if she uh, throws something at me, I'll let you guys know. Yeah. Thank you. That's technically last one's my turn, but you skipped me, but that's okay. I, will, I won't say anything. Uh, oh, okay. Well, that doesn't matter to me. <laughs> uh, I do Tekken 8 next, actually. Oh, I was yeah. wondering if you would do Tekken 8. I'm glad you did. Yeah, I was uh, excited because I actually never really played much Tekken before, and I was really in the mood to play a 3D fighting game. Um, so I was excited for this one, and it really delivered. It has like a fun over the top story mode. I actually really liked the arcade quest mode, though, which is like a kind of a tutorial, but also it gives you a chance to like pick your character and have a kind of story focused uh, thing that gives you an excuse to play a lot of matches. 
and learn how that works. And there's like this, you know, dumb anime arc about like, you know, like, uh, what's it really mean to play Tekken and stupid stuff like that. But it's a lot of fun. Uh, but even just like climbing the ladder, you know, picking a character, I want Reina and just like learning to get really, you know, like, like decent with her learning combo strings and all these mechanics. It was always a ton of fun. It's a very satisfying fighting game. A ton of great characters in there. I think all the new additions, even Coffee Lady, are a lot of fun. I see a lot of people playing the new characters, really. Like Victor, Coffee Lady, Reina, always seem to be popular choices. Uh, and I feel bad calling your coffee. Azucena? Azucena. Azucena, yeah. I did it. Right. I did it, everybody. I'm proud yeah, it of turns you. out Tekken rules. I get it. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I, and like, I haven't played as much as you, but what, what I have played, I really was in love with that game. Um, it's like, I think you guys described it early on, it's like a confident game, a very confident yeah. fighter, and like, it, that comes across immediately. And I think all the characters look great, and it just has such great juice. It really does. Uh, the thing with Tekken 8 that I'm most excited for is seeing its presence in EVO this year. Um, yeah. The Tekken yep. block, I'm always excited to see the finals in. Yep. Um, and then just seeing that game looking nicer, performing more solid. Uh, I can't wait for that block. Jesus. Yep. Going to be a good time. Uh, Jan, I think it's you again. Even though I've spent a uh, pretty limited time in it and the game has been crashing on me like a motherfucker. Uh, there is something about Dragon's Dogma 2 that yep. gets its hooks into me that taps into that feeling of being playing Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom. Um, and I tend to bounce bounce off of fantasy games really quickly. Um, hot take here: I didn't really like Skyrim. Um, Ow! Uh, yeah. Just because it, it just it just never felt like it was for me. Um, but I think the ability to constantly have a posse of folks following you around and all of them to be fairly competent. Like I don't think I've ever been frustrated with a pawn actually. Uh, now that I think about it, and seeing that extreme example yesterday during your stream grub where. Uh, you and Dark Mitch are gripping for dear life onto a griffin. Dark Mitch falls off. You fall off eventually. And then Dark Mitch is there to catch you. I think uh, really, really wows me in such a special way because I think there is so much um, dumb possibilities in this game with even your tool set kind of feeling fairly limited. Like, I kind of miss being able to uh, reliably fast travel around. I miss... Um, a lot of quality of life things from other games like like this. Um, I wish I had an Ascend, for instance. Sure. Um, but pairing that with the the dumb shenanigans and having like a giant party, and I, it just feels like a, a a weird, terrifying world to live in. Like last night, I fought what I think was a werewolf, a giant wolf or something. Yeah, um, I fought that guy. A war wolf. A war wolf. Uh, and then, you know, I had three pawns with me, my my trusty group with me, and I, I felt confident enough to take take it on, even though it had, like, a pretty substantial health bar. And then out of nowhere, uh, four other NPCs jump in and join the fray, and there were just, like, thieves jumping around, a bunch of, like, sprays of fire and lightning happening, and it feels so great. Uh, the possibilities are endless, and I can tell you as someone that really enjoys story in video games, I don't fucking care about anything happening within the story here. Uh, the yeah. gameplay and the shenanigans, the open world tomfoolery is enough to like propel me through. Um, I just, I just like having a, a party in a game like this. Yeah, I, I, like, oh yeah, what if yeah. you did have a party in a Skyrim? That would have been really neat. Yeah, and and it feels like that here. Yeah, you have you had you would have like maybe one retainer in Skyrim. And I would usually actually never right. even do that because they usually just they kind of got in the way. Yeah. And yeah. like, you know, uh, Mike and I, we both enjoy the Kingdom Hearts series, but sometimes yes. Donald and Goofy are absolutely useless. No, how dare you? Um, <laughs> and then like, unless it's a game like Final Fantasy VII Rebirth where you're, give, you're given direct control of your party members, like they can kind of feel superfluous and just like, just get in the way. Here, the pawns are actually substantial. They're, they're doing things. Like, I don't want to imagine playing the game solo dolo because then it'd feel very uh very lonely and despite the constant chatter and i mean constant chat yep, of they are always popping off um i i adore it i absolutely love it this is like a goofy ass game that i think um uh, a lot of folks should check out and it seems like a lot of folks are really digging it 
and enjoying it. It's yes. definitely reached a wider audience this time around. Oh, it's yeah, doing it's doing well. very well. Yep. Uh, Mike, it's my turn, but I'll let you go first this time. That's oh. very uh, nice of you, Jeff. Thank I, you. I, I noticed. Uh, I noticed Jan's Persona slander earlier, and I'm not going to abide it because uh, <laughs> Persona 3 Reload is absolutely one of my favorite games. Still been, I've been playing it consistently almost since it came out. Like the Which, way I love like playing, more than a month, right? Yeah, that's the way I like to play Persona games. Like sure, I will oh, yeah, just totally. play like an hour of it every night before I fall asleep in bed. It's it runs fantastic on the ROG Ally. I'm you know like in uh, almost into December now, so. Pretty far along but man this is the best persona game now um like i think it just uh persona 3 was always very good it was always kind of the first one so there's some awkwardness there with the way that it worked and you know it was, it was a late ps2 games so wasn't the most pretty thing and then you know throughout other releases like portable they fix things here and there now this game really does look fantastic i think a lot of the rougher edges have been ironed out there is some new content here new character moments uh that are fantastic it you know, i like persona 5 but there is something about this that is a bit more streamlined it's not maybe quite as much fat as persona 5 has and i like a lot of that fat fat is t flavor right that's fine but this is a linear experience that sometimes is a bit more digestible i don't know why i'm making it all about food uh, we're hungry delicious right but it's just a very satisfying loop of like yeah for a while i'm gonna do all the social stuff and that's gonna feel good and then you get into tartarus and i played enough of these games now that i can like really have very good long sessions in that uh kind of uh randomized dungeon world now and just constantly making my persona it's always it always has been a good loop but it feels fantastic here i think adding things uh to the battle system like the kind of limit break things that you have now and the ability to um if you get a hit a weakness you can pass your turn to a party member that was from five uh, i love having that in here it is just smooth AF. I am loving Persona 3 Reload. I'm waiting for the lull in the year, Mike, for to eventually circle back because I feel like I've gotten everything from Infinite Wealth, still on the way to finishing Rebirth, yep. and then I just want to like sink my teeth into Persona. There were a lot of big, very good RPGs in the beginning of the year. Like I have not touched Infinite Wealth yet, and I feel bad about it, and I still oh. mean to get to it. I also really want to play Unicorn Overlord. I feel bad that like yeah, I can't. Yeah, I want to play that too. I feel bad I can't speak to it to this list because people do really like it. But I haven't touched a, a second of that one yet. Yeah. Um. So we have two spots left. That doesn't mean we have to stop at the two, but we can add a couple more and then start uh, maybe cut, pairing back real quick. But uh, so I figure I just uh, throw out a couple. Yeah. Uh, real quick. Uh, RZ. Um. Oh, Ar RZ, absolutely. Yes. RZ, RZ's one of my favorite games of the year. I really, yes. really enjoy what I've played of that. Um, it's I'm not almost... even on this GameSpot list, is it? What the fuck? It's, it's not. I, I, here, I'll send you guys another list. That's what wow. I said. Come I on, GameSpot. <laughs> that's what I was looking right. at. I'll, yeah. log in, I'll log into their CMS and add it. Yeah, we'll fix Man. it. Um, oh, RZ's yeah. like really, it's really special in that it captures a very specific time a very specific uh, feeling of game of these early FMVs where, where early CD gaming where like, we didn't know what was possible. And, and we were kind of, I think I was looking off from the side. I think most people were looking off from the sideline at these things and be like, that looks weird and expensive. And I'm like curious, but I will never, ever actually get to play that because it's way too expensive. And what this does is it gives me a chance to experience that today with people who understand that feeling who understand like like what is going on over there and they really made, remade a game basically just like that with the weird animation style that has like no rules and the, the the terrible voice acting that is actually terrible in a super charming way in this game and then they made an inoffensive like little fun platformer game where you go back and forth and do uh tasks to be able to meet new characters that are always so fun to meet because they do have this wild animation and these wild character voices so hey, they just th everyone the princess is here yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah they know what they're doing and they nailed it in you know as someone that has like no reverence and has only ever seen like maybe the first scene in that game yeah. uh this absolutely is on an acid trip the whole way through yes um, and if you have no interest in playing this game, I highly recommend just seek a playthrough, maybe. Yeah, seek a playthrough, yeah. Just just so you can see the cutscenes because it is cinema. 
yo, like fuck, it's fuck over Scorsese. Like, yeah, this, get a CDI uh, controller. Plug I'm it so in your jealous. Computer. You got one of those CDI controllers from Limited Run. Yes, oh, that looks so good. Shout out to Tom Caswell. He just yeah. gave it to me for my birthday. I think. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it ruled. He just, I, he just felt it pressured by you. Yeah, I love this game. Uh, I like admire it deeply. Yeah. I think it's so cool what they did here, taking this like infamously bad game and like making something that's like kind of a parody but then also like fun and good to nice. play yeah it's awesome i want to see so much more feels of this made like, with love right in terms of like a video game like having a, a very specific goal and then achieving that this is like yeah. way up there with me i'm gonna be shocked if this isn't in my top 10 by the end of the year i had a stupid smile on my face almost the entire time I played this thing. It's like like if you ever had a kid that like loved an ugly toy, mm -hmm. that's what CDI games are. Like oh, just this good. ugly thing and p having someone like grow up and then be able to express that love in their own game, it just is so nice to experience. Um, the other one I was going to say is Expeditions of Mudrunner game, which we'll see if it's going to be able to make the list, but uh, I, I have been enjoying it. It rules. Sure. It's a great Steam Deck game, actually, because they do make it more bite size. Um, and just like picking it up and be like, all right, I was in the middle of this task. I will, uh, I'll go get my other truck and we'll just keep, keep, keep going to the goal here. Uh, see if I can rescue that other truck while I'm on my way there. Uh, it's the, the quest design is actually much better thought out than any of the previous games as well. So I, I'm enjoying it quite a bit. Awesome. awesome. What about, uh, what about Penny's big breakaway? Yeah, I like that a lot. I just I haven't like that played lot. enough of it. I feel hmm. to put it on there. I definitely want to play more of it. Same. That's yeah. for sure. Uh, but uh, I, I am liking it. I, I would want to put on Unicorn Overlord. I don't know if it's going to hang on my top... Oh, God, hang. Uh, stay, <laughs> stick around on my top 10 until the end of the year. We'll see. I also don't think it's going to probably make its way to the top 10 of like the sites uh, list by the end of the year. Well, I'm going to play. I'm going to try it. And I'll, I'll, we'll see. Well, but that being said, like uh, I really like the flow of combat and the gameplay. Uh, the story is hit or miss. It's incredibly okay very middle of the road while we're throwing out uh right. buzzwords mm -hmm. um but just the way that once you get kitted out and once you unlock en enough uh party members and tile sets um i was really disappointed when i fired up the game and learned that you're not actively controlling your party members other than guiding them around a map like i was disappointed when i eventually got into combat and saw that i'm not directly giving them orders or whatever but then that pretty quickly goes out the window once you see like the depth that is available there and seeing how uh the different abilities and especially the different characters and specifically specific units really synergize well with each other that by the end or not by the end but by uh the time where the gate you're really into the thick of it with the combat um it's really singing and it feels incredibly satisfying just seeing the meters tick off and not giving uh, any opponents or enemies even the chance to attack. Uh, like, mm. you're going into encounters where the the whole time the boss is taunting you of, like, I'm going to get you. You're not going to be able to get past me. I'm a big wall of a person. And then you eventually get there and completely, Pretty like, good, thank you. Uh, you completely rinse through them uh, so easily because the way that you have two party groups uh, just synergizes so well where you're able to like bash a front line with hammers and then your front line is just nothing but thieves. So they never get hit. Um, it, the demo for this game is incredibly generous. Uh, it'll give you a good sense of whether or not this you'll, this will be for you and whether or not you want to stick with it. Um, I think it's really special and I, I don't want this to fall into the same um, spot that Dio Field Chronicles fell into because I feel like that game also had a lot of neat things that it was trying to pull off. Yeah, I think Unicorn Overlord is pulling off different things, but I think um, it, it is such a neat idea to approach turn-based combat, strategy combat, and it also has tiles. So you know, yep. it's going to yeah. be. Like I need a, I need to experience well. it for myself. I have the demo on the Switch. I'm just going to finally play it this weekend. It runs this incredibly is, well. This yep. is the game I want to play the most that I haven't played. Probably once I beat Persona Three. This is like my new. Like nighttime portable gaming thing. That oh I yeah, into. yeah. Even before like a dragon on, so I actually want to play this even more than that. I'm really excited. Uh, um, I think you could at least put it up on the list for now, Jan. Yeah, let's yeah, do I it. Just yeah. Put that up there. Yeah. That, that might be. Oh, oh. Also, yeah. it's a it's a vanillaware joint. So all you uh, sucio motherfuckers out there, uh, yeah, you can you get enjoy your fix. 
those character designs, there is a lot. What are you talking Ooh. about? Uh, characters in every video game have been ugly until Stellar Blade came out. All right. Oh, right. I'm stupid. Yeah. I'm, I'm the beta here. <laughs> ah, your beta powers off the chart. I see that Sean's um, very excited. There's Fox Girls in the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, I did get a message from Bailey. She said, like a dragon. And she also said that new Sheeran the Wanderer game. Um, oh, I want to so. play that real bad. Uh, yeah, Sheeran uh, the Wanderer, can... for people who don't know, is like the mystery dungeon people. It's like the mystery dungeon game they make that isn't tied to another IP, like the Pokemon one or like the Chocobo one. Um, yeah, I need to check this one out myself pretty badly. Uh, but you can delete that, Jan, because we have none of us have played it. Um, <laughs> sorry, Bailey. Yeah, next time, just come to PAX and tell me all how good Sheer and the Wander is, and maybe I'll play it. I'm going to um, play it, Bailey, because I respect women. Oh, man, there he is. On Women's woman, The woman respecter. Yeah. Uh, all right. So we have uh, kind of like, let's see, one, well, we two, have three, four, five. I think we five. To get rid of one. Okay, I wasn't about to count, but thank you. You counted for me. Um, all right, well, yeah, let's get rid of one. Um, all right, let's get rid of Expeditions. Yeah, sorry, oh, Jeff. I know. I mean, I, I, I want to check this out also. Yeah, right? once once the multiplayer is active, which it might be by now, I'll make you assholes play this game. Uh, like, I didn't realize like how Mikey. heavy of an RPG year this was until looking at this yes. now. It's been insane. Um, here's my question for, for, uh, for you two. Do you think that we've kind of peaked in this first quarter because it feels like things are going to slow down? Yeah, I mean, I pretty think there's, still, there's still quite a few games I'm still looking forward to, but sure. it's not like the first quarter was. I mean, come on, we had Suicide Squad. I I thought about trying to get Suicide Squad on there. I was like, no, nah, it's not. Um, it's yeah, not. listen, it, it, it was a first quarter heavy year, which might make this uh a bit redundant when we get to the end of the year but who knows like i like i said i keep hearing dragon age is coming maybe there's gonna be a lot more surprises like that actually coming out this year you yeah, know that, still pick games star like wars that, outlaws is still supposed to come out this year right Indiana is that true Jones. Is that, that's that's supposed to be this year i think yeah yeah Indiana all right so Jones. we got some plenty to look forward to then yeah uh yeah what's well, i'm i am excited for that thousand year door remake now yes, that's, me uh, too. that's actually looking pretty good i love that game so i'm excited for that yeah, yeah i'm also i'm growing curious about dragon ball z sparking zero um oh, yeah. i've heard well i've heard interesting things i've got some good news for you i'll send you forward you an email <laughs> yeah, oh right there you go hot dog <laughs> yeah there um, you go yeah i you were, you know, looking at the order of this list, it's not that bad. Uh, you know what? Yeah, listen, I think uh, I would like to see like a Dragon Infinite Wealth above Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, but I know that I think it's probably just no. me. So yeah, I think I'm okay with accepting at least the first five, and then the bottom five looks good. Actually, can we move Arzet up to six, right behind Hell Divers too? I would move Arzet up as much as you want. All right, let's move I that think, up. Uh, I'll put it above Hell Divers too. Let's move it above Hell Divers too. Yeah, yeah. that actually rules. Get up. Okay. We, I, we, yeah, you know, I would we, maybe say it, Mike. We put Persona over Dragon's Dogma. We'll do that for now. We'll do that. Can we can, what, can we move Dragon's Dogma and Persona above Tekken Eight? Um, eh, sure. I, I'll I, mean, back I don't you know. Up on that. I'll back you up on that. Thank you, Jan. You're in control. Sean's of upset. Uh, Sean, I, yeah. I objected. Let it be known then. Okay. Yeah. I, there's there's still a couple titles this year that I'm fairly excited about. Like, I want to see how Stellar Blade's going to land. I want to see. Uh, is Metaphor Re Fantasio? That's supposed yep. to be this year. That's yeah. this year. Harold Halibut is April 16th. Yeah. Um, yeah. Tales of Kinzera. The... I want to see the oh. whole game. Children of, of the Sun, that uh, sniper game I played on the demo derby. Oh, or not yeah. The, yeah, the demo thing. That yeah, yeah, is coming yeah, yeah. out coming out like a week from now um uh, oh, what is the uh, another game one? i want to circle back to and maybe convince y'all to do it with me is grand blue fantasy relink yeah, yeah i, I, try I did that. i just downloaded that things. on my steam deck okay uh, yeah. I, I don't know why because I'm, I'm it's not a me game but i'm i downloaded it on my steam deck so, uh yeah there's a but there's a bunch coming out still like uh, another crab's treasure that uh, teenage mutant ninja turtles arcade wrath of the mutants uh tales of kinzara zao yep. um yeah, there's a lot to look forward to, but oh, Homeworld three is the one I was thinking. I'm like, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm ready for another Homeworld game. Hellblade two is coming out. Hellblade two in May comes out oh, in May. Yeah. It'll be in May. Yeah. Do, uh, do you want me to read this list for the audio listeners? I yes. I think we're happy with this list as is, right? Yeah. So Mike, why don't you go ahead and read it? Uh, start from ten and work your way down. So these are our uh, top ten games of the first fiscal quarter of 2024. <laughs> At number ten, Unicorn Overlord. 
Number nine, Tekken 8. Number eight, Dragon's Dogma 2. Number seven is Persona 3 Reload. Number six, Helldivers 2. Number five is RZ, the Jewel of Faramore. Number four is Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth. Number three is Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown. Number two is Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. And number one, who could have seen it coming? It's Bellatro. Yeah. I, I want to well play done. another quick game here with, with you two and, and the folks at home if you're listening live. Um, I, I want you all to, to do a mind exercise of how much some of these items are going to move by the end of the year. Oh, yeah. okay. I think I, I would put money now that Bellatro is going to win our game of the year. Yeah, that was an interesting poll question I saw in the chat. It's like, is 2024's Game of the Year on this list right now? I, Bellatro's I, like I really like Bellatro. It's not going to... I wonder if it's going to be on my top five. I have a little bit of that snobby importance yeah. scale thing in me sometimes. Oh, the Jeff like, Bacalar really, importance. I have a does. little <laughs> bit of the ba Jeff Bacalar you importance are, thing hey, with me. In your defense, you're much better than you used to be about that, Mike. You used to be, like, <laughs> be completely dismissive of games like this. And now you're like, no, I like these and play them, and they're great. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, so, like, Blastro will definitely be in my top ten for sure. And I think it's going to do very well on our list. Um, I, but, you know, like, my number one out of all these right now is Rebirth. I would not be shocked if that is just my game of the year when it's all said and done. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm in a tough spot here because... Uh, I l absolutely adore Infinite Wealth. Um, I'm liking Rebirth well enough. I think I am kind of in between Tam's feelings on the game and Mike's feelings on the game so far. So I guess that mm. nets out to a nine. Um, there you go. Right. That's true. There you go. Uh, thanks, and then, thanks for remembering my score. Of course. I remember every score, Mike. Uh, <laughs> and then Bellatro, just, geez, it's a good turn your brain off game that you still have yeah. to think about. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I, I think that, um, Bellatro Rebirth will definitely be on there. And then everything else is, has a chance of missing even Prince of Persia and like a dragon, infinite wealth. Although I will be fighting for both those games. I, even I'd be fighting Pr Prince of Persia is probably my number two right now. I'd be, yeah, I my, would be fighting for Prince of Persia. Number one, I think. I, <laughs> I don't know how much of a chance it has in the final things. I love that our set is this high here. I love yes. that game. Uh, yeah, that like... reminds me. When we, put, when we post this to social media, can we blur out everything except for our set? I guess we well, should number this too so people can you see. You should number it. And uh, just for yeah. my OCD, you should add the subtitles for our set and Prince of Persia. I'll but yeah. Fix it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy! All right, yeah. Well done. Uh, yeah, so that's... good job, boys. Yeah. yeah, and thank you once again, Bailey. Bailey named the game of the year. Bailey the got it in one, and then just pieced out. It was kind of a baller alpha yeah. move. I'm intimidated. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bailey was like small. Bailey had trained her cats to yeah. unplug her Ethernet cord, <laughs> right? So she could do the peace signs, the deuces, and then it just yeah. turned off. Yeah, I think just... I understand why they got their own day now. Those women. Yeah, finally, we, we've learned the value of women. It's been a powerful <laughs> episode, everybody. We've learned a lot. We've said a lot. And maybe we shouldn't have learned or said anything. It turns out. <laughs> the story of Giant Bomb. Maybe we shouldn't have. Oh. Maybe we shouldn't have. <laughs> but yet, like everything else, we persisted. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Jeff Grubb, thank you. Mike Minotti, thank you. Bailey Thanks, Myers, Jen. thank you. Google Docs, thank you. Uh, Turbo Sean, thank you as well. Uh, and thank you for listening along at home. We unofficially, officially crowned Game of the Quarter. Um, and Jesus no, Game Christ. of the Year so far. Game of the Year <laughs> so far. Um, love to see it. Love, love a good numbered list. Uh, folks, we'll see you next Tuesday for another episode of the Bombcast. Next week's going to be an interesting week. Uh, the, the folks are going to hold down the fort. I don't think there's going to be a Blight Club next week because Danny Boy is on his way to WrestleMania. We'll find <gasps> oh, out. That's so yeah, uh, yeah he, might, he might be gone already. We'll figure it out. We'll see how it's going to go, everybody. Yeah. I don't think we've officially, officially said anything, but I'll be joining Dan Reichert in Philly. Uh, for an anime in, convention. That's right, Marino. An, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, videos, wrestling videos will be abound. Uh, I'll make sure that he's, his fingies stay healthy throughout the whole week. Don't yes, worry. You protect those, those things. Thank you, Jen. Uh, but we'll see you next week for another episode of the Giant Bomb Guys. Into Fisco. Woo! Whoa, Alf. 
Yeah. Goodbye, Bye. Jim Ryan. <laughs> Happy trails, Jim. Get fucked, you Joe Lieberman. It. I'm glad you're dead. <laughs> 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 oh my God. That's fucking good.